Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Siad Juwini and Thorsten Stenzel aka Nook about their classic Na Na. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Na Na by Nook. Enjoy! Nuke is a project from German duo Siet Juini and Thorsten Stenzel. In the year 1992, they released their track Na Na, which was the debut track from Nuke. It features a sample from the song Usi Na Na from Scottish singer-songwriter Nicolette. Na Na became a big success and it topped the charts in Italy, but also in countries such as the Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg, Na Na ended up in the top 5 of the charts. In this week's vlog you will see my interview with Siet and Thorsten, in which I asked them to share the story behind Na Na. Fun fact, this was the very first ever interview which I recorded on a boat. We started the interview when the weather was pretty nice, but after a while it started to rain and in the last minute of the interview we heard some thunder. So right after the interview we ended up in a thunderstorm and pouring rain, so we had to rush back. And that was quite an experience. My first question to the guys was, what kind of music they did listen to when they grew up? Oh, hip hop, um, pop music, radio music, everything. But mostly hip hop, like when Houdini came out and uh, Rapper's Delight, blah, blah, blah. That was what, what was catching me. But also a new Deutsche Welle, that was catching also. Yeah. So that's a pretty old kind of music. Yeah. And for you? Yeah, I was more... Um, I mean, my sister was a hippie, so I heard a lot of Bob Marley from her and Jimi Hendrix. And then me personally, after that, I discovered uh, like Kraftwerk. And I remember I heard the first time Das Modell. And I was so amazed from this electronic beat and was like, oh, wow, I want to know actually how they did this. So mm -hmm. I think that was really influ influential for me. Yeah. And around what age were you then? I was probably like 15. 14, 15? Yeah. yeah. So are you both classically trained? Um, I'm uh, classically trained uh, drums, like the Marsh uh, drum, I played that. I played it also with notes, uh, like three, four years, and then I stopped. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah, a piano trained since I started with, fifth, with five. Till 15, I, I played piano, I started piano, and then from 15 till about 19, I I um, learned church organ and graduated also as a church organist, funny enough. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Work and roll. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, what age did you start like with producing your own music or like writing your own music? Uh, it's really funny, I was like about 15 or 15, 14, 15 years old. I did the, <laughs> the typical thing with uh, a two cassette recorder and played everything and dubbed everything. So that was really my first experience. And uh, we actually did one of the track on a cassette, and uh, you remember Rugger Muffin, uh, Rugger Style? Mm -hmm. It was Rugger Style with a made-up English rap on it. <laughs> and uh, that was my first experience. And later on, my, uh, when I met Justin, I, uh, I, I think I was about 9, 20 or something, and I started also buying my old stuff. Yeah. yeah. So can, can you tell how you guys met and where? Um, yeah, I was uh, spinning, I was starting very young, with 18, 19 playing on a big club in, uh, in uh, Dietz, uh, and it's near Limburg. And um, yeah, it was a 3,000 people club. And I was spinning there Friday, uh, really every day since, like every day, Sunday from Thursday to Sunday, Sunday uh, evening for the kids. And uh, on Saturdays he came by and said, oh, cool, everything, and all the techno stuff, all the new stuff start. And I played that, and he showed me uh, on a cassette uh, a demo, and I was I didn't care, I put it right away in the cassette, I did it often and play that and uh, yeah, and then, then we get sympathetic to each other and then uh, yeah, that grows up like I have an idea, took up records, played for them and I said, well, let's do something and I was about, yeah, it was about 1990 I guess, I was 19 years old and yeah, you also I had my first little studio yeah, which yeah. I set up in my, in my kids room was like a 16 channel Alasis mixer, I remember. and Only with like, height and bass? Yeah, exactly. No the equalizer was only bass and high. And 
we still managed to, to work on yeah. everything and yeah, made music with it, which was like so minimalistic if you compare mm -hmm. what you have today in the studio, I mean, or what you have in your laptop. Um, so it was kind of crazy, but uh, it was the beginning of, of this kind of yeah. Um, scene. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, for this interview, we're going to talk about uh, the track Nana, which came out exactly 30 years ago under a project named Nuke. Um, first things first, was there anything that inspired you when you started to work on Nana? Yeah, that's uh, it was me. I was uh, call, buying records for for the club also, or for me, for myself. And it came across uh, the Nicolette on Shut Up and Dance Records, uh, the label from England, I guess. And um, I was listening to it. I, I liked the Nene Nyo Nana, and the rest was like really uh, breaks, breakbeat stuff. And uh, just uh, the, the, the vocals were the best of everything. And I showed that to. Um, to Torsten, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, playing in some records and have some ideas, and and at the same time, um, uh, James Brown is dead from LA style came out, and um, I, I thought maybe let's do something with the sample and do something like uh, this new techno stuff what came out from Holland or Belgium, and then we create a uh, new Knana. Yeah. So, what do you remember from the production process? Well, I mean, we. I remember I sampled it from um, from vinyl, of course, because he had the vinyl, and um, I couldn't really clean up the sample. It was like it was because there was no apps or tools. Um, you could only clean up the record <laughs> before properly. Had it and then it was no, it was S seven seven fifty. It was like the previous really small sampler from Akai, where you could put basically twenty samples, and then the memory was full. Yeah. So we put this one in there, and then sampled that very short lead sound from LA style that 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 but we could play our own melody with it because it was a nice short sample and um, of course we knew it was sampled from there but also we changed the melody so it w we didn't rip up the melody mm -hmm. so it was our own uh, our own melody yeah. Yeah. and uh, yeah yeah so what, what kind of equipment was used for the track yeah it was a like I said it was an archive sampler S750 pretty only samples I guess yeah it was yeah, only nice. pretty much samples for yeah. this one and Maybe I mean, we had a, I had a 808, a Roland 808, I had a 909, I had a... Maybe we used some of the Yamaha stuff because I used to have the... The um, FB01? FB01, I had a DX100, could be some of that stuff in there too, but I think it was pretty much sample based, yeah, yeah, yeah. so the sampler was full of samples, yeah, yeah. everything we could put so in there. Public Enemy samples, you know? Yeah, it, it went like maximum memory for <laughs> Yeah, it was getting yeah. full, that's right. So what was the most difficult part of the production? I didn't remember any difficult, it was coming out of the flow. Yeah, yeah it, it came like, easy, yeah. it came super easy. I mean, what what was interesting was basically that uh, the Nicolette sample was a little bit in a different key, so it wasn't very melodic, mm -hmm. but it somehow matched with the samples. It was catchy. Like a, like yeah. a catchy and was like a... Yeah, I mean, we didn't even know what we were doing there, basically. <laughs> we just did this thing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, how long did it take you to finish the track? Maybe say like two, three days. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, no, I don't think so. I, it was a couple of days, I think. Maybe. Yeah, if you get out everything together, and uh, but I think in hours you can say 10 hours, I, I would say 10 hours. Maybe, yeah, but yeah. I came back a couple of times to it, I remember. Yeah. But, but it was... Yeah. It was like weeks. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So, um, um, yeah, was it difficult to find a label for the track? No, you, you, you know, uh, he knows a uh, little someone, uh, the, the producer's guy. Yeah, I knew someone who had started just a new uh, distribution deal and stuff, and I met him, and he was interested in music, and I just told him, look, we made this, and he liked it, and we released it on vinyl very fast. Yeah. I'm here in a little bit. Okay. So, what, what did happen after the release? Did the game hit not like straight away? Um, well, it took a while, huh? It took a while, yeah, because we had a lot of li licensing, um, but really, it was everything fresh, uh, fresh, and uh, the distribution there, but at that time, they selling all over the world to s some other uh, countries, and uh, yes, yeah, so that some some um, people from other countries or record labels, whatever, they, they saw this record and uh, asked for, for, for um, li licensing the track. And then over that, because then it came on Flying Records. It was Music uh, Man, it was a Music Man, but Rave Records and America yeah. also. So it went everywhere to all kind of different licenses, and then, uh, of the course, we also had to clear the Nicolette sample. Yeah, because which was you, somehow you, done. You, you forgot to do that. 
Yeah, yeah. well, we did it afterwards. Yeah, we just saw that we registered. Oh, they, they told us they did not. It. Yeah. It's like yeah, we're going to register the, the 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 sample and stuff, and we can we can we gonna not give you money first, but we have to clear up. The I, I, I remember we paid like ten thousand bucks for it or something. No, no, we have. I I remember that trade. They yeah, took ten thousand from us. Twenty thousand from each. <laughs> yeah, yeah, twenty thousand from each. Oh. Yeah, yeah. In, yeah. I remember we didn't get anything from. This. It's like yeah, I can, like, can sign it, like, yeah. and then you will get more. For, oh, cool, I'll carry sign. Just sign here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the, the, the track was like uh, number one in Italy and yeah. the band of Lucy was like number three. So yeah. what, were you surprised by the success? We, I was I totally don't surprised. Think I, yeah, I was totally surprised. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I, I, was, I, don't, I was more... Uh, it was suspect to me. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I had no idea this would become like a hit yeah. record. I don't have any... Ima- Imagine of that, you yeah, know, it's yeah, like, yeah. it's like, okay, what's going on here? And, uh, so I remember we went to Hilversum yeah. and they were on this music show. I don't remember what it was. And there was, um, everybody in the house of love. And I started, oh, uh, he's 17. He's 17. He's 17. I started a fight with the singer yeah, yeah. Oh. and I think he wanted to punch my face and I wanted yeah. to punch his face. And then they said, what kind of shit music you produced? <laughs> <laughs> he started to diss me and I was like, you motherfucker, I'm gonna punch you. Was it, was it uh, Countdown? Yeah, I think it was Countdown. Yeah. But then surprisingly, we performed and they hated or whatever, Nana totally, is they hated us. And I, I was surprised by the reaction of the of their audience because they're all singing along like yeah. super loud and was like, oh my God, they yeah. really know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and it was like personally our first experience uh, with this live mm-hmm. and I was blown away I have to say yeah yeah, yeah that's was when, 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 when I was singing and dancing to the music and it worked everything fine together it was one really impressing yeah. but I didn't have that feeling now I'm a star or something it was still I don't know I just having fun just having fun yeah and and was and sure pe- people came and oh and touching you and and we have to give ev- autographs and everything it's like Okay, but still, so about, yeah, yeah it's t- but still not giving the feeling I'm I'm something special yeah. or something. Yeah. So yeah, that video of uh, Gone Now you can find it like on YouTube. Yeah. It was a popular music show on the on Dutch TV back then. Uh, can, can you tell a bit more about the, the yeah the show? I I really don't. Know. I think I was sitting on the drums or something and playing drums. Mm-hmm. We did two, two shows. I, I think in Hilversum I don't what I was not there. I was in the Belgium or uh, another show. Uh, one of the shows I didn't uh, mm-hmm. script. Well, I remember this crazy audience and I pretended I was playing the keyboard. I was and then we had the singer, the, the black singer, Mar- Marilyn. With Marilyn. Us. So yeah. she, she, not Marilyn Metz, she performed, <laughs> <laughs> she, she kind of performed the vocal because it was a sample and we yeah. wanted someone. Marilyn Mariani. Marilyn Mariani. Yeah. yeah, we had her on this stage. This is not Marilyn Metz. Not Marilyn Manson, <laughs> and she was basically pe- trying, you know, to to perform and yeah. Uh, yeah, to, and we to did sell. Two years, also a version with her. We did a version singing. with her singing but the whole hook, like but it wasn't be- becoming a, a big yeah. one. The, the original was still. Yeah, that was a little already, and everybody knew exactly. That, yeah. Yeah. So, do you have any idea how many copies of uh, Nana have been sold? I think more than one million world. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, but I would say with compilations and everything, yeah. I would say I would say with compilations, yeah, probably yeah. a million or so. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So, what is your favorite memory when it comes to the release of Nana? Oh, we had much, a lot of fun and was really dancing. We also went went on the first tour. Yeah, we where we went sure. like in a in a in a, in a sedan together, squeezing keyboards, drums, everything, yeah, yeah. sitting like this in the in the car. That's true. Yeah. And then we toured through the Netherlands and Benelux and Italy. Italy also. Yeah. And I remember Italy was was a lot of fun. We yeah, went to Rimini, Rimini, and then Rimini. played there live, and it was like the audience was going crazy. And so was it actually live then? Yeah. Part of. Well, yeah. He kind of DJed also to it and yeah. played the drums live. So yeah. it was a little mix. Yeah. But it was, of course, we couldn't create this live live because the amount of equipment we would have need. But we did something, we had on it. We, we added had stuff on it, we yeah, had a, always. Yeah. Always like moving around. It was not like you press stage. play and on, on the tape and then was And it. like this yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's like really... So yeah, are there, are there, any, are there any other special memories that are worth sharing? Oh, at the work when we did yeah, from, from then that. Yeah, we had a lot, a lot of fun and uh, we, we, are a lot, we were totally music lovers and we were, were totally catch about this new uh, techno house, techno stuff, and everything. It was really everything was new and exciting, and I think we had all, all we had, always we have a good time. It's no, no, 
So sure, some discussions, because I'm more like DJ-wise, it's more like the metal stuff and everything, to get the both parts together. But it's always most fun, and um, yeah, it's 30 years ago, so I don't remember. But I remember we have a, I remember that we have a really good time. Yeah, yeah. So you already said it, like Nana is celebrating its 30th anniversary. Are there actually any plans for, for a 30th anniversary, like new remixes or something like that? Actually, I'm really thinking about it, and I um, I I wrote uh, I read an, an interview from um, from Nicolette I don't know, online, and she was so nice and talking about everything. She has also other people have uh, uh, sampled Nicole, uh, the yeah. Nene or Nana, and she was totally fine. And really thought about maybe to contact her, and we make a I don't know make a remix with her together or whatever yeah. I think she's open-minded to that I, I will I would try it yeah maybe but uh, strict plans not 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 yeah. you, you guys still own the rights from from yeah yeah we yeah. still do yeah, yeah? yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And, and <laughs> good, good to know good to know yeah. <laughs> yeah so if you could pick whoever you wanted to make a remix of Nana who would you pick and why oh that's a good one I would pick I know who I would pick, but you can say first. You probably see some weird. No, 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 no. I enjoy a techno guy that's no, already dead. Actually, no. I would, I would pick a cold cut. I, I, uh, they did some good tracks ten years ago, yeah. and uh, I think it was new school, old school, old school one with Roots um, Roots uh, uh, Van Over, mm -hmm. and I love that stuff. And I think they would would make really good breaks, breaks kind of yeah. stuff, yeah. Uh, remix, yeah. And that's come directly to in my mind, to yeah. my mind. Yeah. Well, I pick someone younger. I pick Oliver Heldens. Yeah, Oliver Heldens. Yeah, I think he could he could kill it. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Good, yeah. good, good. So yeah, Thorsten, I know you're still very active in the music scene. Uh, what, what, what about you? Are you still doing music? Yeah, I'm really uh, do. Uh, I have my own, my own studio. I have my three or threes and everything. And uh, I'm, I'm, but I'm not really looking forward to get out, spread it everything out. I restarted uh, my old label, Penguin Music. You know, you released on it. It's from '94, and I'm I'm really um, close to a, a di distribution deal, and I have really a lot of tracks on in a in, a, in my in my uh, closet or whatever. Mm -hmm. Some new stuff, some old stuff. I'm playing bass. I'm a bass player. I uh, take also lessons, and yeah. So I'm I'm working on on, on stuff. I did in the past couple of records also. Some uh, on on. on also, uh, the one guy you interviewed on this label also, uh -huh. from Mainz. And uh, yeah, I, I'm still doing stuff, but not like Tosman and uh, like in, in, in a professional way, but I would say in a, in a little professional way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And what, what kind of genres are we talking about then? Yeah, it's more like house stuff. Also, you know, I really try to do more melodic stuff. Uh, I play also guitar, so I took, take YouTube lessons mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, please. Just shrivel the chords and everything. So it will be a mix of well, like uh, monotone stuff, techno stuff, housey, uh, maybe also a little bit EBM style stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of plans. A lot of plans, yeah. And uh, less time. <laughs> yeah. I, I know the feeling. So is there still something on your bucket list music wise? Bucket list? Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, for me, it's like. There's not really a music bucket list, to be honest, because I've experienced so much in the last 32 years. You know, I've, I've made records with my idols together and, and people I was listening to in my youth and suddenly they are on my records. I met so many famous people. I worked with famous people and... His daughter's famous. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. nope, here's Thunder. <laughs> so musically bucket list, I wouldn't say, I, I think. It's just a journey, and, and I see where it's where it's going to take me. Yeah, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. And for you, I have to know what is a bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I explain. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what do you still want to do? Like, yeah, like you your wish list. I'm a wish list. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm pretty lucky, honestly. I I want to do way more music, and um, that's really a, one of my. And I don't know. I'm. I'm Pretty happy. Okay. Yeah. And that's the most important. Yeah, my family is, is doing fine, and I'm a family man. He's also so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the most important. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot for your time. I would like whenever. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That was it. This week's vlog: the story behind Nana by Nook, my interview with Ziad Juini and Torsten Stenzel. Thanks a lot for your time, guys. Much appreciated. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And I actually had another interview with Torsten in the works. Uh, we were gonna record that one right after this interview, but as you might have noticed in the video, uh, it started to rain and there was like a massive thunderstorm coming. So yeah, unfortunately we couldn't record that interview, but that one hopefully will be done the next time Torsten is somewhere near, so fingers crossed. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.